Have you ever wanted to get your bait out to where the fish are? On this episode of FCO Fishing NZ, we check out electric contiki fishing as competitors take part in an electric contiki competition. We will share some great tips from contiki experts and Darren has some interesting encounters while diving in a South Island river. It's the middle of the night, we're up in the far north. We're at Fotififi, which is uh, on the east coast. And what we're here to do is something a little bit different, is we're actually not really taking part, but we're witnessing a Contiki, electric Contiki fishing competition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and we'll uh, go and see how these guys do electric Contiki fishing. We'll show you a few tips and tricks on how to use Contikis, and hopefully we'll see a few good fish caught and have a really good time. The weather is forecast to be absolutely atrocious. There's thunderstorms, there's strong winds, there's everything going against us. So hopefully we can get out on the water and show you what these electric contikis are all about. On a gusty day, I traveled with my family to a beautiful Northland beach, which was the only area that was even half suitable for fishing to try a spot of electric contiki fishing. We're gonna put our electric contiki, electric torpedo, some people call them, out into the waves. Now these units are great for catching a feeder fish. The nice thing about them is they're not wind re reliant, so you can put them out any direction, as long as the waves aren't massive, obviously. But they'll go out through a pretty decent surf. They've got pretty powerful electric motors on them. And we're using the modern Seahorse one, which has a combination of GPS and compass technology, so it keeps going straight. It's a pretty unique unit, so what I'm gonna do is bait up my hooks and show you how to set it up, and then we'll set it out and see if we can't catch a couple of snapper for breakfast. I'm only gonna be setting 10 hooks today because really all I want to do is catch a feed. You can set up to 25 hooks on a, a Kentucky or a Kite or a Longline, but 10's enough for me because if, heaven forbid that we get a, a fish on every hook, 10 fish is not too many for all of us that are fishing. And if we don't get enough, we can always do another set. So 10's a good number, it's nice and simple and you're not going to catch too many fish. Now when you're baiting up with a Longline hook, you really only need to put the hook through once on a tough bait like a piece of squid and squid's really good for this because it is tough so it uh, can get past the crabs and everything. Sometimes we sweeten up the hook with a piece of pilchard as well. The winch on the seahorse is an electric winch which is powered by a deep cycle battery and you've got your drum here which holds about two and a half thousand meters of line which is a lot of line. Your control here you've got three speeds fast medium and slow and your uh, winch control on or pulse if you're just bringing in the line intermittently. You'll get um, three or four retrieves easily out of a battery and that's a day's fishing no problem and they're pretty easy to charge up at night. So the winch and it's nice and solid so it holds on the beach again you can put a rope on it and tie it to your tow bar just to give it a bit of extra support if you want but a pretty solid piece of machinery and to freewheel it you just take the circlip out and it will freewheel when your electric Kentucky is taking your line out. Right, this is the powerhouse unit, the, the electric Kentucky, okay, the seahorse. What you do is you point it in the direction that you want it to go, and uh, you've got to be about five metres away from your car or any other electrical interference so the compass and GPS works properly. Then you plug your batteries in, there's two batteries and one's basically a reserve so that uh, you never sort of run out of battery. Put your cables in and this will fire the unit up and some lights will start flashing and all things start happening. Once you've connected up your batteries you just put the watertight hatch back on. If you see here the two lights indicate that the GPS has a uh, bearing and the compass has a bearing. So if I want to set that I've got it slightly set out to one angle which is fine and I'll just hold this magnet over it and see how the straight line comes up, which indima in indicates it's locked onto that course. This area here indicates the length of time you want the motor to run, so I'll take it down to probably just about 15 minutes. Now it's on 15 minutes, so the motor will run for 15 minutes once I set the start with the battery. We do that in the waves before, so we don't burn the engine out. So with my baits all rigged, 
and with a bit of help from my kids, I set the Kentucky out to sea. To launch the electric Kentucky, you only need to be in shallow water about a half a metre deep. Once the line had run out about 100 metres, we added the first weight. So here's the sinker dropper, put the sinker on. And then we started adding pre-baited traces. You leave a gap between each stopper so the sliding traces don't tangle. Got good teamwork going with this set. It's the way to do it. Now all we had to do was wait. As you can see, I've got my young fellas in the water having a splash. Now one thing, beaches are wonderful, east coast beaches are generally a bit safer than the west coast, but at all times I keep them under supervision, so they're in, in range of what I can see what they're doing, and they've got boogie boards and wetsuits on so they're keeping warm and safe. But one thing, if you've got kids in the water, just make sure you keep an eye on them the whole time. You know, that's that second that you turn the back that something goes wrong. And it's just a simple thing, but it's the simple things that count. I was eager to see how our first set had gone, so we started pulling it in after only 20 minutes. And I was pleasantly surprised when we had a snapper on the very first hook. But that was the only fish we got on that set. The Seahorse Kentucky has a bright orange flag so boats can see it as a hazard in the water and it also has a strobe light that comes on if for some reason your Kentucky's out after dark um, boats will be able to see the strobe light flashing in the water for safety reasons. Right there's a nice little school size snapper that we've pulled on the Kentucky. Notice the long line hooks right in the corner of the mouth. The little squids here are just an attractor because if your bait falls off you still might get a bite uh, even with the attraction of the squid lure. So we've got our dinner. We set the electric Comtiki once more, and this time we left it for 40 minutes. It usually takes about half an hour to retrieve the Comtiki when it is set out about a K. Obviously if you set it out further take and use more than 10 hooks it will take a little longer to bring in. We've done two sets with the Seahorse Electric Conk Tiki. We've caught three nice snapper for dinner. And I tell you what, we've been out fishing on a day when it's really blowing hard. You wouldn't go out on a boat and there's not many shore fishing options. So the Conk Tiki has proved that we can get out and catch a feed with the family, have a bit of fun. Coming up, we head over to 90 Mile Beach and meet some of the locals. And we see how the competitors are getting on in the competition. The wind had shifted to the east, and 90 Mile Beach was looking good. Fish were hard to find, with only a few kahawai being caught by anglers. And then we met Charlie. This is a Hukateri Gap West Coast Snapper. It's only a sprat, but they get mighty bigger than this, but it'll have to do for today. I got another, I got his little baby brother in the other chilli bin, but um, this fellow will have to do for today. <laughs> Being a fun competition, the organisers had a prize for collecting the most rubbish. And as the teams go up and down the beaches, they've been asked to collect as much rubbish off the beach as they can, which I think is a really positive thing to do, because it doesn't matter where you are in the world, I've been to some of the most remote beaches in the world, and there's, there's rubbish everywhere that gets washed up. So they're just doing their little piece for the environment by picking up a bit of rubbish as they drive up and down the beaches. So I'm going to do my bit too. And if everyone fills up a bag, we'll have less rubbish on the beaches. What a great initiative. As we travelled along 90 Mile Beach looking for anglers who were catching fish, my eye was attracted to some movement in the sand. So I thought I'd stop and check it out. I'm not sure if the little seal had come to shore for a rest or if it wasn't getting on so well. It definitely looked happy and healthy, but you just never know with wild animals. The seal had no fear of humans, 
but as it had no obvious injuries, we left it to its own devices and carried on a little further down the beach. We were greeted by Bruce, who had also found something interesting on the beach. Nice piece of bait, I don't know what's happened to it, doesn't look to be marked or injured in any way, but it's still got ink in it as you can see, so it uh, certainly hasn't been jigged or caught commercially. So probably just a, a fish that's just got run out of time and drifted up on the beach. As Bruce was about to set out his electric contiki, and he had already had some success earlier in the day, we decided to hang around and see if his luck was in. Bruce set his contiki out quite a long way, and after about an hour started to bring it in a few hundred metres at a time, and then he would let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes before retrieving it some more. He told me that he had used this technique for good success. We would soon find out if it worked this time. It's really cool when you see the line coming in with a tight trace and a bow wake of a fish. It's important to handle the hook fish carefully when they are coming in. Don't give them any slack line. I saw more than one fish swim away happily after getting off the hook in the waves. And trust me, there's nothing more comical than a grown man chasing a fish in the surf as it swims away, managing to stay just out of reach. After the gurnet and a few bare hooks, there were signs of another fish on the line. with Bruce and we've hung out for about an hour and a half while he set out his uh, electric contiki and I, I had great faith in him because he's got a fantastic rig here you know he's got a trailer set up it's got running water it's got solar power it's got gas cookers you're pretty well set up mate so I thought you'd, you might perform for us and he's definitely done that with 10 hooks he's produced four fish two nice snapper a gurnet and a carway, so a pretty mixed, ma mixed bag there, Bruce. Yeah, it is a mixed bag today. Yeah, so they're pretty hard work today, though. Yeah, yeah. All... yeah, no, it's hard work. The conditions of the sea are nice, but the uh, air conditions with all the rain and the barometric pressure going all over the place could make the fish a bit shy. Well, actually, the fishing conditions, I think, are good. A bit of rain never hurt anybody. I've yeah. <laughs> been out a few years. Yeah. But no, you're right, it's just very disappointing. I mean, the 90 mile diesel produces pretty well. Yeah, especially, yeah, like I say, it's pretty calm out here. Now, when you're setting your contiki, I noticed a variety of baits. Yeah, I seem to like to use a bit of a mixed, mixed uh, mixture of baits. Yeah. Some big and some small, you know, and all sorts of different types. Yeah. And what's your favourite bait? Well, at the end of the day, I quite like um, fresh carbide. I think it's pretty good, especially on contiguous and kites. Yeah. Nice and tough. It's tough, yeah. yeah. It's uh, nice and oily. It just seems to hang in there, um, and the little ones don't pick it off. And even yeah. if they do pick it off, they leave the skin on. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the snapper come back every yeah. day. Now, uh, yesterday I seemed to know you got a fairly good sized snapper. How big was that one? Oh, it's quite a good one. It wasn't a record, but it was not a bad average. Yeah, I think about 7.65 kilos, if my memory serves me right. Yeah, I can show you. Oh, we'll have a look at it, eh? Yeah. He's got it on ice, we'll have a look at it, eh? So what you got here, this is the fish that Bruce got off the beach yesterday. You can notice the colour difference, because it's been on ice for uh, a while. And this is a fresh fish. So good, two good things to notice when you're looking at fish. So if you brought this to the weigh-in today, we'd know all about it. But this is a nice fresh one. They're good fish, Bruce. As we reset Bruce's contiki, I noticed my little friend from earlier having a play in the waves. 
he definitely looked more in his element in the water. Well, it doesn't get much better than this. We've had wind, we've had rain, but finally everything's abated. We've caught some fish and we've just cooked them up in Bruce's camper. So sitting on 90 Mile Beach, looking out to sea, waiting for the next set to come in, eating freshly cooked snapper. Just doesn't get any better than this. You don't need to do anything except chuck it in a fry pan when it's this fresh. That is good fish. Coming up, Darren finds a feed in a South Island river and we see who the winners are in the Kentucky competition. Standing on a riverbank gearing up while fishermen cast lures for salmon is not something I've done before. Tamuka, midway down the east coast of the South Island, is not on many Spiros to go lists. What I'm about to show you may change your outlook on river diving and what may be available to you. Jackson, my son, is my dive buddy for the day. Target species a big black flounder. All that is needed for this is a basic hand spear and a good warm suit. These flounder are a very generous size. Note how Jackson threads it on his fish stringer before removing it off his spear. This stops the fish getting away if he hasn't ickied it properly. Having fish on your belt is not ideal if you're in sharky waters. In a river like this there should be no problems. Camouflage is the only protection flounder have. Getting too close is not conducive to making a fish stay still. They use the dust trails for cover. This is a must when they're out at sea. I have filmed small sharks in the past hunting flounder out on the sand. The flounder was too clever in the instance I witnessed. Jackson's getting used to hunting these fish and what to look for. Scan slowly and look for a faint outline. This one's going nowhere. They're quite quick. Chasing them down can sometimes work. This one's an easy target. A five-prong spear makes easy work of landing them. The colour of these flounder out of the water was stunning. Some of their spots turn bright orange. Jackson has a good string of them. They'll make several meals prepared properly. There is so much varying terrain, the flounder were only on the nice flat but very silty ground. It's amazing what rubbish you can find. This sign certainly looks out of place. Jackson spotted a big brown trout. Remember, these are only allowed to be caught on a line with a license. He's a good sized specimen and seems uncertain whether to take off or not. We've moved further up the river now. Jackson scans under the banks for eels. The trees create a great habitat for things to hide and live in. Who knows what we may see here? Check these out. A big school of salmon. Again, these are not allowed to be taken by spear. This big loner is sporting some damage. I think this is from mating. There seems to be plenty here. We're in a big hole at the base of a steep bank. Obviously a good place for them to sit. I could certainly nail one of these if we're allowed to. Some of these fish, I estimate, would have been around the 12 to 15 kgs. 
Jackson summoned me over. This eel must be foraging for something under the twigs. An easy target, but we've got plenty of flounder for dinner. He seems to be using his petrol fins as stabilizers. It's not nice when you find rubbish in such a pristine environment. This is terrible. The sign sums it up. Stop throwing litter in our waterways. There was a real buzz at the weigh-in with some absolutely awesome fish being caught. The way the competition was set up was in such a way that it did not promote overfishing. It was good to see everyone got behind the rubbish collection. While the results were being tallied and the final fish being weighed in, a beautiful dinner was being prepared for all the competitors. At the prize giving, the minstrel performed his unique brand of Kiwi humour and entertainment. From the sand dunes up a 90 mile to the oyster boats and bluff, I've experienced Kiwiana. I can never get enough. So turn your ears onto my tail and your town you might uncover, because this is Kiwi Tunga, a different dialect discover. I know it can be a horror fender we haven't got a house to live in. <laughs> Would you like me to hunt a villa out for you? I love my Morris Minor, my wife thinks I'm obsessed, because I've got a picture of her tattooed on my chest. And all my life I'll s for her, I'll wash her, drive her, shine her. Rum, 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 rum. Beep, beep. I should leave the hooters out. No. Cause in my book you can't beat the look of Mary the Morris Minor. At the end of the prize giving, the big winners were announced. Charlie's Angels were the overall winners and the major lucky draw prize was won by the Kiwi Hopefuls. <laughs>